presentation of the recognition awards that we're handing out, um, highlighting the important and valued work um, individuals have done across Ontario when it comes to supporting victims of crime and more importantly, that prevention piece around elder abuse. And then we're also going to be um, speaking with Nadine Prince um, on recognizing vulnerable victims needs uh, through the court process. But before we begin, I do want to highlight that this week, um, all of the webinars that we've done have been because this week is Victim and Survivors of Crime Week. And it, it's a week where uh, we as an agency wanted to have the um, platform and the ability to raise the important awareness um, issues around elder abuse and vulnerable seniors. We know that there is so many uh, victims um, facing uh, the court process, so we thought it was going to be um, a valuable asset to have um, the Victim Witness Assistance Program here today. Uh, so just a few housekeeping items before we get going uh, today. Uh, so sound and audio is uh, naturally muted for all of the attendees on the webinar. A recording of this webinar will be available on our website about 24 to 72 hours after we're done today. And then of course, if you want to adjust your size of your video um, in between the presentation and the speaker gallery, there is a bar um, where you can move the screen uh, left or right, depending if you need the presentation bigger or the images bigger for the ASL interpreter. We are uh, excited as always to be able to provide an ASL interpreter today and you'll see her on the screen uh, throughout the whole presentation. And of course, we encourage you to put any comments in the chat box today. Um, if you're having technical issues, put them in the chat box and please leave the uh, Q&A box for questions, which we will get to at the end of the webinar. And of course, we encourage you to um, fill out a very brief evaluation, which will pop up um, at the end of the webinar. Uh, and we're really looking for your feedback as far as future webinars um, and uh, some suggestions uh, moving forward. So before we begin, it's my uh, pleasure to provide um, our territory land acknowledgement today. EAPO endeavors to honor the land and its treaties by strengthening our relationship and responsibilities to them. We live and work on Métis, Anishinaabe, Ojibwe, and Cree territories. The presence of uh, settlers is not neutral. It has and has it has and had continued uh, to have devastating impacts on many aspects of life for Indigenous peoples. Many of our practices, including the way we care for our elders, the way we educate, and our methods of creating community came to these lands through an ongoing process of colonialism. We now hold a new understanding in our interactions and engagements with this land and its people. There's important work being done by many nations and allies to ensure the continued thriving of all communities and knowledge systems. Those of us who are settlers need to recognize that our knowledge and way of doing things may not be the ongoing priority as we work towards a safe Ontario for all seniors. Thank you. So a little bit about this uh, week and then we're gonna jump into the awards is um, beginning on Wednesday, so November 25th, uh, was the UN's International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. It also, uh, it also marks um, the beginning of 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, which concludes on December 10th, which is the UN's International Day for Human Rights. Uh, we know in the work that we do that violence against women is one of the most widespread and persistent and of course, devastating human rights violations in our world today. It's an estimate that about one in three uh, women will experience violence 
uh, whether it's physical or sexual throughout their lifetime. And our role with EAPO is to shine a light on the fact that um, seniors are victims of violence and we need to learn how to support them in the best way possible. So it gives us great pleasure um, on behalf of the uh, Organization of Elder Abuse Prevention Ontario to give recognition to um, many of the networks uh, across Ontario um, who've done some outstanding work and uh, leadership in terms of um, their support to their elder abuse network. Um, so just building on uh, what um, Laura had mentioned about the importance of the Victims and Survivors Week, it, it really is our, an opportunity and time now to um, recognize uh, those individuals, but also the work that agencies and organizations and individuals are doing in our communities. And part of this, um, part of this week is to, um, to highlight that, that acknowledgement of service providers and that dedication, because with this, we know that this is not an easy task. We know that many of you who are on, uh, participate on elder abuse networks, do this voluntarily off the side of your desk, as we often refer to it as. Um, and we know that there's so many um, individuals not, um, you know, I know how difficult it probably was for the networks to nominate just one person because uh, everyone plays a role and making a difference in the lives of older adults and in their communities. So we do have uh, 13 individuals that we are going to recognize today um, with, uh, with our awards. And we, uh, we take great pride in working collaboratively with you. We appreciate all the work and um, partnerships that we've had over the years. Um, I know myself, I've been with the Elder Abuse um, uh, Ontario since the inception of the strategy, since 2003. So I know many of the uh, nominees um, well, um, some I uh, are getting to know. Um, but after reviewing all the applications, um, I'm just astounded by the remarkable work that people have been doing in their communities and uh, um, it just it's it's unbelievable the progress and, and accomplishments that have been done not only within your own local communities but how further that makes uh, ripples out across Ontario we learn from each other with with our meetings and uh, and collaborations that we do so I want to thank you before I go into each individual person um, because I know it's not just the people recognizing today, it's everyone on those committees and those who have also joined us today um, to celebrate uh, their member and their representative within their network. So we will be sending uh, by peer later next week um, the awards that we will be presenting today. Um, they, the printer, the company we're using, weren't able to get the all the uh, uh, everything completed. Um, just shipping has been delayed just because of COVID. So the award will look similar to um, this, um, where this is just one person that's been nominated with Inga. Um, and we will be also sending a certificate as well, um, which will be framed for each individual to um, have. So we do have your information and we will be sending that along. So each, each nominee will be sending, will be uh, receiving that. So it gives me great honor to start the awards. Laura and I will be um, alternating in terms of the recognition. And I just want to highlight that these, uh, what you see on the slides is only a bit of the contributions that people have contributed within their networks um, around elder abuse. We will be posting on our website a complete uh, bio of individuals uh, of the work that they've done around elder abuse to give further recognition of their work. Um, we are limited in terms of going into great detail of everybody, but we want you to know that there has been such extensive um, work that each person has done um, that we just want to highlight some of the key components uh, of your work. So we're going to, um, for those who are able to join us, I know some of the nominees aren't able to join because of conflicts in their schedules, but uh, between Laura and I, we're actually going to promote each person as a panelist and give you the opportunity just to give um, one tip that you might provide to individuals joining us around the prevention of elder abuse that you've learned over the years. Um, and if we may have a, a duplication, that's fine. Um, just something that you've learned over your years of experience and dedication to work with elder abuse. So um, it gives me great honor to start with uh, the nominee, Sherry McKean. So I've uh, actually had the privilege of working with Sherry for many, many years. 
Um, she sits on both the uh, Northumberland Elder Abuse Network as well as the Kortha Lakes, Halliburton Kortha Lakes Elder Abuse Prevention Network. She's been involved in the development of the, um, the Northumberland Elder Abuse Response Guidelines booklet. Um, she's been participated in developing many uh, research, or sorry, many grants um, to produce materials and resources for those. She's chaired, she's done meetings, she's organized, she's really kept the momentum going um, in both of those communities over a number of years. And she, uh, while she's doing that, she's also has a full-time job with the Central East Local Health Integration Network um, as the community outreach and um, education representative. So um, over 10 years, she has dedicated her time and energy into promoting the safety and respect for individuals. So Sherry, um, I think that you may have the opportunity to speak if we've got this organized on our end. Did you do that, Laura? Uh, I thought I did, but just bear with me a second. Here we go. Sherry should be able to talk now. Hi, Sherry. Hi, everybody. So thank you um, to the Northumberland Elder Abuse Resource Network for uh, nominating me for this award. And thank you both to Laura and uh, Rianne for the uh, many years of uh, collaborative work. And I guess the one tip I would uh, uh, say is that uh, use the framework of the see it, name it, check it whenever you are um, speaking with somebody about elder abuse. It is a great tool um, to keep uh, the issue in focus, uh, whether it's regarding um, physical or financial abuse or neglect. And the other big piece I see is the collaboration with the community uh, agencies and uh, so that we can do appropriate referrals between agencies, um, which I think is the reason why uh, the momentum has continued over the years is the collaborative work that we do together. So thank you again for this um, nomination. Very much appreciated. Thanks, Sherry. And uh, I know it's been uh, it's been great working uh, with you. And um, I put in for each uh, recognition, I tried to pull out a, an important quote um, that people who had made nominations about um, the individuals. So you can see the um, the quote around Sherry's dedication and commitment, um, you know, to both of those uh, both of those communities. So thank you again, Sherry. Laura? So our next award recipient is Jennifer Josephson. We're so happy that Jen's being nominated. Uh, she's been very active in her community. She's the chair of Durham Elder Abuse um, Network. Uh, like Sherry, she also has a full-time job where she's the senior and community health worker at Brock Community Centre. And she just recently, I think it was last spring, she was the recipient of the Tammy Rankin Legacy Award. And um, as I said, she's the chair of um, the local Durham uh, network. And she's been the chair since uh, 2010 and really keeps that whole network uh, together. Uh, she was a wonderful resource to Durham Police as the Durham Regional Police Seniors Response Coordinator from 2014 to 15. And that was um, a frontline role where she responded to cases of elder abuse um, in partnership with uh, frontline police. Uh, she also is a, a wonderful presenter and facilitator um, around the police services uh, simulation training that they do at Durham Regional Police. And uh, Jen, if, if you're able to talk, uh, if you could say a few words, uh, mainly about what you would, um, you know, uh, wise, wise advice you would give anyone entering this field or some prevention tips on elder abuse. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. You can turn your Thanks camera on so if you want to as well, Jen, it's up to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the office, so I... Uh, it's up to you. I, there we go. Perfect. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks again from, uh, you know, my nominees at the Derm Elder Abuse Work and Elder Abuse uh, Prevention Ontario for recognizing this award. Um, it truly is an honor for me to be part of our network. We have such a strong 
and dedicated network in Durham. And I mean, I think I have to echo Sherry's, um, you know, uh, sentiments when she talks about community and partnerships. Um, I think we all know that elder abuse and senior safety cannot be addressed um, in silos and the importance of connecting with our community partners because everybody does play a role. Um, I know, and I think I had the great opportunity of learning from one of the best, uh, Tammy Rankin, and she was a leader in this. And so I was able to, uh, you know, pick up a lot of her really great, um, uh, you know, examples and, uh, and really learned from her. So I just try, try to carry on that work each and every day and treat our older adults um, how I would want to treat a family, a family member. So, um, you know, I think that uh, if we all keep, you know, spreading the word and we all keep um, educating and advocating for, for more, for older adults, um, we can only do greater things in the future. So thank you very much for this award. It's a great honor. And uh, I look forward to hearing some of the other nominees today. Thanks, Jen. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I do want to share one of the quotes here. And as Rayanne said, we're going to have everyone's bio because we got all these great quotes and you can truly tell uh, what an impact certain people have in their communities. And I think there's a real importance in that. And you can see here that, you know, Jen's reputation truly precedes her within Brock Township. And she's known as the true ally to all seniors. And, you know, uh, we all hope to grow old. And when I'm a senior, I hope there's a Jen in my life for sure. <laughs> Congratulations, Jen. Thanks. So it gives me um, honor to recognize Tracy Rogers and she is with the Sarnia Lampton Coordinating Committee on Violence Against Women. Um, and she has got to be probably number one INR champion. She has done over 50 presentations to INR in her community. Um, they were given a grant last year with from the Seniors Community Grant Program where she delivered 48 presentations, but reached over 800 individuals in the community, which is quite remarkable. And they even uh, did presentations um, for the first time, I think, within their Indigenous communities um, in terms of getting outreach to the First Nations communities um, in Kettle Creek and Stony Point area, um, which, is, uh, which is wonderful to hear as well. She's always willing to support um, the work of the, the network of the Sarnia Lampton Coordinating Committee. She works with, uh, her full-time job is works with the Sarnia Lampton Coordinating Committee on Violence Against Women. Um, so she has a lot of expertise in knowing what the dynamics and issues are around elder abuse. Um, and she's always there willing to support their efforts, apply for grants and work um, and uh, grants to continue to fund the important work um, that's being done in the community to protect seniors. So Tracy, um, thank you for uh, the work that you do. Um, and we're just going to ask you to uh, say a few words. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I'd like to thank our SLEAN committee all as well, Sarnia Lampton um, Elder Abuse Network and Lori for the nomination. And I think my biggest takeaway would be similar to what Sherry had said is that we are so lucky to have in Southwestern Ontario, the resources from the Center for Research on Violence Against Women and Children. I've worked very closely with Margaret McPherson and they lead the way with uh, being able to give us the training to then forward the training out into our communities um, through PowerPoints like the It's Not Right. Um, basically teaching the bystanders to recognize the warning signs, to know the risk factor and where to go to re for resources in our community. And similar to what Sherry said, my biggest takeaway is to keep it simple. They did it with the sink it conversation, the see it, name it, check it. And like we're lucky in Sarnia Lampton, we have three First Nation communities and they've always been so welcoming for me to come in to teach their elders on how to stay safe, how we can protect our seniors in our community. So I think the bystander approach is, is the best way we can go. And thank you for the nomination. 
Thank you, Tracy, and so well deserved. I do want to uh, um, highlight uh, the quote here that uh, Tracy is always willing to support and efforts, uh, all the efforts of the local network um, and always looks for opportunities to apply for grants and funding. And we always need real go-getters in our community like Tracy. So just a, a big congratulations today. So um, Inga's just having some technical difficulties getting in. So I'm just going to ask uh, Laura to go to the next nominee while I work um, in getting uh, Inga back online. And if you could recognize Sherry, um, and I'll Absolutely. To the panelist. So we're we're very excited to welcome uh, Sherry uh, as a nominee of this award today. Uh, Sherry has been with Elgin County for several decades, and uh, she was uh, a practicing registered nurse and a certified occupational health nurse for many uh, years. I'm sure. I'm sorry. There's a misprint. It's Shirley. Uh, it says Sherry here, but. I think Rayanne might have been doing these at two in the morning. So uh, my apologies, Shirley. Um, Shirley was a registered nurse for many years and as well as an occupational um, uh, health nurse for many years within Elgin County. Uh, she was instrumental in the creation, growth and uh, development of, of East Elgin family health team in Elmer and, and what an important team that is. Uh, and it's, uh, Shirley, sorry, Shirley, now I want to call you Sherry. Um, Sh Shirley is the member of the Elder Abuse Elgin since 2006 to present. Uh, she's been chair and vice chair for eight years and uh, past chair for the past five years. She also was an INR champion and we've heard many references to INR uh, around that bystander approach. Uh, she's been providing presentations uh, to service clubs, seniors, church groups for over 14 years. Uh, surely well-deserved. What I'm gonna do is I am just going to uh, unmute your mic, so bear with me. Um, is Shirley on the, the line? I don't see her in the attendees. Okay. I don't think she's with us. I, I looked through okay. and I don't think she's able to join us. Okay, I just wanted to make sure Shirley had an if opportunity. If we missed that, Shirley, just please put it in the chat box because we can't seem to find your name. Unless um, she's on the phone, but what I'll go ahead and do and, and just share a quote because I think these are really impactful uh, that uh, she's a, strate a strategic thinker and we all need these um, sort of thinkers in the work we do and believe strongly in partnerships and collaboration um, among all organizations. Uh, so congratulations, Shirley, well-deserved. So um, I know Inga is still trying to get online. Um, I do want to recognize um, uh, Jane Teasdale and Laura, could you Absolutely. just do that? And, and Jane has been promoted Excellent. to the panelist. Uh, so we're thrilled to recognize Jane Teasdale. Uh, she's a real mover and shaker. That's not on the slide, but that's just, we all know that about Jane. Uh, so a heartfelt congratulation. Uh, for Jane. She, um, she's uh, Business Development and Community Relations Director at Mosaic uh, Home Care Services and Community Resource Center. Uh, Jane also is the co-chair for the North York Elder Abuse Network for more than 10 years. Uh, she also served as co-chair for two years on the TIPS, which is the Integrated Partnership for Seniors. And uh, she uh, initiates many lunch and learn presentations about elder abuse, which is so important to get people, you know, even for that quick half an hour to uh, plant the seed of knowledge. Um, and she's educated several healthcare professionals in many hospitals within uh, the North York region. Um, she also uh, is a key player in the uh, International Day of the Older Person. Uh, we, we launched a uh, a large media campaign this year, and Jane was pivotal in providing um, videos for that online campaign. So Jane, if uh, you're able to talk, I think you're unmuted, uh, please go ahead, say a few words and um, any tips that you wanna share with any of the attendees today.
Hello. Hi. Oh, hi, everyone. And, I'm always uh, so happy when this stuff works. <laughs> well, actually, I'm doing, I'm on a big conference with UHN. So oh, I've okay. got two computers going. So actually, the timing worked out well. But um, I, I would like to thank, you know, my, um, my colleagues on the North York Elder Abuse Network and um, my co-chair, Natalie Zalabowski, uh, and also, most importantly, the Elder Abuse uh, Ontario Prevention as well, uh, Christine Chen, Marta, and Rayanne, to keep, you know, to keep the groups going and to driving the groups. You know, I appreciate receiving this uh, award. Um, I've, I've actually been about 20 years on this elder abuse network, which started many, many, many years ago. And, uh, you know, some of the time I've been co-chair, not, and so back on for co-chair. I think it's been yeah, almost 10 years now. I'm also one of the, um, I do do the business development for Mosaic, but I'm also one of the owners of Mosaic Home Care and Community Resource Center. So I have to manage my time. But I, I would say the Elder Abuse Network is, is one that, um, one of the networks which it, it has to, you have to be quite involved in this. And it's very important work, you know, in the, at the community level. And um, I would say a couple of tips is to never give up on your work in the community. Mm -hmm. Community is very important, you know, families and individuals and community and older persons rely on our organizations to provide them with education and navigation. I think integration, collaboration, communication with like-minded professionals and community in the effort to provide resources and education and most certainly the education in preventing elder abuse in our communities. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, each month it's, it's you know, pull, pulling our networks together, uh, brainstorming together. So, uh, you know, there's wonderful people from all over Ontario who, who have spent their time and volunteering and nights and preparing minutes and uh, guest speakers and what they're doing in the community. So without, you know, without our networks, without the elder abuse uh, networks, uh, we wouldn't be here today in helping, in helping our community. So thank you so much for the nomination. Well-deserved, Jane. Well-deserved. So I am going to go back to um, Inga. She's not able, to, she's online, but she's not able to... Um, to have audio on her computer. So um, I do wanna recognize the hard work that Inga has uh, committed over the number of years. Um, I think she's been on the network since I began working with the strategy um, up in that region. And she's shown such dedication and effort and work with uh, the community partners over the years. Um, she, and her full-time job is uh, an occupational therapist at uh, RVH and Barry um, as a mental health worker. So she knows the vulnerability of seniors um, in the community. And she joined uh, the network, I think back in 1996. So held many positions, including the chair and the secretary. She's wrote many, many grants. I know we've had many lunch dates for uh, looking over grant applications and looking at how we can uh, do that, uh, seeing how we can fund different projects. I know she works quite closely with the chair, with Pauline, who I know is on our line today, um, and with the committee members. One of the big accomplishments I know that they've done in the past is development of a community response protocol guidelines for regulated and unregulated healthcare workers, um, which continues to be a very evident document today in the community. And I know they're looking for continued funding to update that. And um, has been involved with WEAD events, senior programs, um, and in fact, she actually was um, a regional consultant with uh, Elder Abuse Prevention Ontario uh, for a short period of time for a contract position um, and supported the uh, Simcoe York and Muskoka region. So um, has a wealth of knowledge and um, her word of advice, as she told me on the phone, um, was to make sure that seniors keep connected um, over time and not to isolate themselves and work collaboratively uh, with our community partners. So. Um, thank you, Inga, and uh, congratulations on the award. Congratulations, Inga.
I can recognize Catherine Pink. She has, um, she's not joined us today. I don't see her. If you can just check maybe Laura. Um, I so Catherine yeah. is the Director of Support Services for Community Care Peterborough. Um, she's also the Chair for the Peterborough Elder Abuse Prevention Network. Um, she's also another INR champion who's done tremendous work in the community. Uh, they applied for a grant um, a few years back where they were able to hire another individual who did community outreach for INR. Um, I do recall sitting in uh, Catherine Pink's uh, um, home doing an INR promotional video for our community just as an introduction. Um, so the dedication she's, she's committed to the network has been tremendous. We also uh, worked collaboratively developing a, a new website for the network. Um, she facilitates the elder abuse consultation teams, leads those meetings, continues to encourage new membership and collaboration within the community and takes several calls around elder abuse cases um, within her organization, but also from the community. So um, we acknowledge Catherine's hard work and dedication uh, across Ontario, um, across Peterborough and the work that she's also been doing with the Age Friendly Peterborough to incorporate elder abuse within that work plan. Would you like to recognize Penny? Absolutely, we're happy that Penny McVicker was nominated uh, for this award. Penny is the Executive Director of Victim Services Brandt uh, for the past 20 years. Uh, she also is a, a certified trainer in uh, violence, threat assessment and trauma response. Uh, she also was instrumental in developing the mobile uh, tracking system in 2012, uh, to, in which uh, that provides um, security devices, mobile security devices for uh, victims of domestic violence that are considered high risk. Uh, she was the first vice chair of the Ontario Network of Victim Services Providers, and she also is the co-chair of Grant's response to violence everywhere. And she is um, the past chair of the Brandt Elder Abuse Committee. So congratulations, Penny. And if you wanna come on the line and say a few words and uh, maybe highlight some prevention pieces everyone could take away with she, today. I also don't see her on the list. So okay. um, unfortunately she hasn't been able to join us. Well, con congratulations, Penny, and very well deserved in your hard work within victim services and abuse prevention is, is outstanding. And Shauna is, um, is here with us today. Um, so it gives me honor to recognize Shauna. Shauna is uh, a great resource in our community and across Ontario. She uh, works as an occupational therapist in private practice. I know she started her own uh, company and I know she's extremely busy because she's also a des designated capacity assessor. So I know that uh, we call upon her. We've had Shauna do presentations for us and webinars. Um, not only within um, our community uh, programs, but also with our police partners to educate them around capacity. She's, um, she was hired as a seniors at risk coordinator when the, when the network had funding available um, to secure that position and, uh, um, and has did a remarkable job because of her expertise and background and ability to assess risk and capacity was able to really fine tune figuring out those seniors who are really vulnerable um, and the situations that they were in. She continues to be a committee member and a treasurer for the, the Halliburton Cross the Lakes uh, Elder Abuse Prevention Network. She's delivered many tea and talk lecture series, which is uh, part of the work that we've done. We've done some work collaboratively around that as well. Um, and she continues to do a power of attorney outreach. So she actually has um, developed a program for uh, around powers of attorney that she does want to educate continued service providers as well as seniors about the pros and cons and things to think about when you're developing a power of attorney based on her, her experience, particularly around financial um, uh, abuse and the vulnerability of that with capacity. So Shauna, would you like to say a few words? Yes, thank you very much. I would very much like to thank the Elder Abuse Prevention Network for the, the nomination and uh, I'm very excited for today. Uh, as a designated capacity assessor, my two favorite words are understand and appreciate. So it's fitting that my tip has to do with understanding and appreciating 
um, what your power of attorney actually does and, and what power it gives people and whether it's appropriate for you. Uh, so my biggest tip to people is to um, help people to review and understand those power of attorney documents. Um, I suggest using the, the five W's and the H, the who, what, where, when, why, um, and how. Um, because it's important that people really know what those documents are, are giving people permission to do. It's important that they know who they've, who they've chosen and why they've chosen them. Uh, it's important to know uh, what roles they have, what permissions they've actually given people. Um, and it's important to outline what they expect in return. Do they expect a certain amount of feedback? Do they expect uh, check-ins? Do they expect uh, different things? And so um, I find in my practice, one of the biggest, one of the biggest issues is around often around miscommunication or misunderstanding either of the, the roles and responsibilities of a power of attorney, So both on the part of the person granting it and on the part of the attorney. Uh, and so that would be my biggest tip is, is to review those and check them over and every few years, make sure that they actually still meet your needs and that you know what they actually say. Great. Thanks, Shauna. Um, and thank you for your continued work with the uh, Halliburton Prevention Elder Abuse Network. Um, and uh, we may be calling on you for another webinar or something up soon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Congratulations, Shauna. Um, our next nominee is uh, Ernie Sibbett, and he is with the Niagara Elder Abuse Prevention Network. And I believe Ernie has been promoted as a panelist. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Ernie is a retired uh, CAW worker and has been on the network for many, many years. He is also the chair of the Crime Stoppers of Niagara Elder Abuse Program, and he has a passion around uh, promoting uh, anti-ageism. So, getting people to know, you know, it's the ageism isn't right, and how it connects to elder abuse. He's even had uh, the opportunity to go on television to promote these uh, these awareness messages. Um, and does education and prevention uh, to seniors um, on the Beware Take Care, which I've seen that, uh, ed that excellent booklet that uh, has been developed and I think in collaboration with the, uh, the local police department um, that provides really good tips and resources for seniors. So I know that he's out and about in his community quite often uh, trying to educate people and is a good um, uh, champion around the issue of elder abuse prevention. He's also been successful in helping to get some grants at the both the provincial and federal level for the community to build awareness around um, older adult abuse and what services are available in the Niagara region for seniors. Um, so Ernie, if you'd like to say a few words. You can unmute yourself. I think he's in the panels. Mm -hmm. There we go. Ernie, are you there? My uh, audio is not working, maybe. Well, maybe we should move forward and at the end. Oh, here's Ernie. There we go. There we are. We can't hear. We can't hear you, Ernie. Well, I'm not sure what the problem is. Hmm. I can see you. And it's enabled, right? Yeah. Microphone's on. I'm not sure what the, yeah. Um, it, it could be a settings underneath where you're um, under your mute about the speakers that you choose. How about we move forward and at the end, if Ernie can um, get, get his on. audio to work, we could bring him back on. For sure. And um, so the other individual who I know Patrick wasn't able to um, attend, um, I don't see uh, um, if he's joined. I know he had uh, conflicting meetings today. Um, oh, there's Ernie. 
um, was a, so Patrick Fleming was a, his works in geriatric mental health in London area, um, has also done a lot of work, um, continued education and training for social workers at the King's College at Western University. But he's also, he's been a member of the network for over 20 years and a committee member also for the community on abuse or committee on abuse and neglect of the elderly uh, the Kane Committee for 10 years as well prior to this. So he's been quite involved for a long time. Um, I was, uh, I sent him an email this morning just uh, recognizing his outstanding contributions because he's done so much in his committee, his community, sorry, um, around elder abuse. So you can see by the list here about the work that he's done, including helping with the establishment of a new website for the, the group, um, the development of community uh, guidelines, which I've seen, and which is uh, remarkable. I know our, our community colleagues have been working uh, diligently with um, with them and in, in developing that and promoting it within the community and we do as across the province. Um, he also advocates at a provincial and national level around the strategy to end elder abuse, uh, works towards uh, promoting elder abuse prevention and ageism, uh, reducing that in our communities, and has also led many uh, discussions and actions on cases that come to their attention. So He's uh, done a lot of work and over the years and has made a remarkable commitment to not only the network, but also the community in terms of ensuring seniors are safe and respected uh, within the London Middlesex area. So uh, we thank Patrick for all his work um, and his dedication um, today. And I know Joanne, who um, Joanne is, is online. I don't know, Joanne, if you wanted to say a few things um, about Patrick, because I know that uh, um, that you are, and you are been promoted to a panelist. So you, if you have the opportunity, if you want to say a few words, you're more than welcome to. Can you hear me there? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Um, we were very pleased to nominate Patrick. He has been dedicated for all the, these years to um, leading our group in, in um, promoting education and awareness of elder abuse, all the things you can see on the screen there. And I, I think we've been ex extremely fortunate to have him uh, with us. He has uh, uh, certainly um, promoted, uh, including, uh, you know, reaching out to uh, members of the community and uh, organizations um, in the community, uh, and worked along with them as community partners to encourage them as well to get involved in um, understanding and awareness of elder abuse and the resources that are available here to us. Um, and I'm happy to have um, nominated Patrick on behalf of Elder Abuse London Middlesex. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Joanne. And for the York Elder Abuse, uh, the Prevention of Elder Abuse Committee in York Region, the committee nominated uh, Tatiana uh, Diamond, and she is a case manager actually uh, with the Central Lynn, so another representative from the uh, local health integration networks. And she's a home and works in the, um, the Elder Abuse Network as on subcommittees, was recently uh, involved in their Hello Beautiful. Uh, Ray Ann, maybe if we could just pause this and have Ernie say a few words. It looks okay. like uh, he has audio now. That's great. Ernie, would you like to say a few words? Yeah, I would. I finally got to that. You know what? Uh, there is much to be said about uh, skills. File so, <laughs> technology. Anyways, uh, I, I just want to say that uh, elder abuse has become very, very important to me. And uh, what happened was I was approached by a professional, I don't want to say in what business, but it was with finances, that uh, he thought the only person that could help him was Crime Stoppers of Niagara. I sat with him, he told me about a case that he had worked with, and it was very, very sad. And he said, because of being a professional, he had no way to do it. However, because Crime Stoppers is anonymous, he thought that if we could get involved with the program, it would help in getting people to turn in the complaints and what they see to do a better job. So when he talked to me, I took it to the Crime Stopper board and they said, go for it. So at that time, uh, Debbie Rollo, who was a friend and was helping at Crime Stoppers and set up a program so we could talk to people. And that's where I met Dion McFarland. 
and the rest of soda history. We've uh, done as much as we can. I've been introduced to racism, uh, race, ageism, and other elder uh, problems that have really opened the thing for me. I think really what we need in our area, and I've seen now, is we need a formal, uh, coordinated approach where everybody's working together and all the silos are all part of one. And then it's like the other people have said, then we can make sure all our communication brings us together. And I think it's very important to educate the vulnerable sector and the general public for people and also people working in the field to know what's happening and explain exactly what elder abuse is because I'm still learning every day what it is. But I'll tell you, I am so happy and I'm hoping Crime Stoppers can help uh, take this program through Ontario and Canada. Wonderful and, and such important words, Ernie, and Crime Stoppers is a, an excellent program. Congratulations on behalf of Elder Abuse Prevention Ontario. Oh yes, thank and you. I would like to uh, thank <laughs> the Niagara Elder Abuse Program for nominating me. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, thank Ernie. Thank, thank you. you. So just getting back to um, Tatiana Diamond. So Tatiana was um, continues to work with the, uh, the Prevention of Elder Abuse Committee of York Region um, and their um, organization uh, had, ne had um, promote her, sorry, nominated her um, because of all the hard work that she's been doing. Um, I think she recently joined back just a few years ago to the network, but has been quite involved with the work of developing their Hello Beautiful fashion show and silent auction that uh, has made the network um, a few thousand dollars just in the, this, this past year, uh, as well as in the past. Um, last year, we had a little bit challenging this year with COVID, but they were remarkably able to still raise, I think, $3,000 this year. Um, she's been involved with uh, updating their response guidelines and is, is on the committee to continue that work. So we want to thank her for joining us and she was unfortunately not able to join us today. And lastly is uh, Kevin Leet. Um, Kevin is with the Peel Elder Abuse Support Program. He's uh, been active with that network for many, many years. He was actually the first program facilitator for that program. Um, he plays an active role in the development of their elder abuse protocol. Um, he contributes to their Silver, Silver Links magazine on issues around elder abuse as well as aging and with the LGBT community. Um, and he supports those in the LGBT community as well as those with individuals with developmental disabilities. He's taken um, a leadership role in developing uh, programs and training participating in conferences and workshops. I know I've had um, Kevin at one of my uh, regional cons uh, conferences in the past talking about that program that they have in Peel because it is such a unique um, program that is offered in Ontario to support uh, seniors. Um, so we thank Kevin for all the work that he has done. And you can see uh, as the quote here, he's you know really is passionate about supporting older adults and has that mission to make sure seniors years should never be tarnished by abuse, a sentiment he believes in firmly. So um, again, we thank pa uh, Kevin for all of his work um, with the network and within the community across Ontario. Congratulations, Kevin. So without further ado, I'm really excited to, um, to introduce Nadine Prince. Uh, in my past life with Victim Services, we worked hand in hand with BWAP, which is Victim Witness Assistance Program. Um, and here she is. Uh, so Nadine has over 20 years uh, working um, in, in the field of victim services, more particularly victim witness um, assistance program. And any of us that um, have experienced violence or crime, uh, it's pivotal to have the right supports through the court process. So nobody better to speak about it than Nadine. So uh, take it away, Nadine. I know that we are going over time, but I encourage everybody uh, to stay on and listen about uh, the important role, especially when it comes to vulnerable seniors and the supports VWAP can provide through that that essential court process. Over to you, Nadine, thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you very much. And thanks to you and to Rianne for inviting me today. I've just had the opportunity to sit through uh, many of the uh, recognitions to your nominees and my congratulations go out to all of the individuals who were recognized today. 
um, and the others of you who are on the call today. Um, it was really uh, great for me to hear about all the amazing work that's going on throughout Ontario to support um, our elders. So thank you very much for having me. I, I am uh, cognizant of the time. I won't, uh, I won't take up too much more um, of, your, of your mornings, but I did appreciate the opportunity today to talk a little bit about um, what this week is all about as far as the uh, National Week of Recognizing Victims and Survivors across Canada. Um, as we know, um, you know, already the impact of a crime, particularly on a vulnerable victim, um, a, a victim from our elderly population um, can be life-changing. And then added to that, uh, the, the idea of having to come to court and actually relive and justify uh, about what happened to them can sometimes feel insurmountable to our clients. So this is a week where we recognize the impact of crime on our vulnerable populations. And I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about the challenges that those uh, folks feel when they uh, are involved in the criminal justice system. It can feel like a re-traumatization re for those people. Um, and so uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with what we call VWAP or the Victim Witness Assistance Program, um, people like me are situated in courthouses in all of your jurisdictions. We are attached to Crown Attorney's offices in every courthouse in the province. And our role is to support and provide information and to help those vulnerable populations navigate their way through what is a very overwhelming and confusing system for many, especially for those who have already been victimized in, in some way or another. So we all know that many, many situations of elder abuse never make it to the attention of the police uh, or to the courts. Uh, the uh, very high incidence of unreporting for a variety of reasons as all of you are well aware, including feelings of shame and perhaps dependency on the abuser or mistrust of the system or um, a misunderstanding of what would happen were police to get involved. So what I can tell you, I'm in York Region and have been in the Newmarket Courthouse for the last uh, over 10 years. Prior to that, I've been in various courthouses throughout the GTA, including Old City Hall in Scarborough and our uh, Superior Court downtown at 361 University. Our numbers of uh, elder abuse cases that I've seen over the last few years in York Region have certainly increased. I think some of that is due to the fact that there is an increased awareness um, of elder abuse and uh, certainly more understanding that there are supports available to people that do have to come to court. So I just wanted to touch quite briefly today on some of the challenges that our clients do face um, when they are required to attend court and become involved in a court case. And I thought you may also be interested to know um, a little bit more about what's happening around supports for those people during COVID. Because of course, like every facet of our life, COVID has um, had enormous impacts and it's certainly had huge effects on the criminal justice system and ultimately um, the people that I support at the courthouse. So I wanted to give you some um, idea of what that looks like these days. So the program that I work for exists because we recognize that people who have to come to court and testify have very likely never been involved in the court system before. If charges have been laid in my area by York Regional Police, um, delays of the court system, uh, which is overburdened and overwhelmed and backlogged can have a huge impact particularly when the case involves family members. So it could be a situation where an adult has physically abused um, a parent. It could be uh, an assault from a caregiver, 
uh, in, a, in a home. Uh, we see financial fraud cases coming to us. Currently in York Region, in my program, we have about 100 open elder abuse files currently before the courts in my jurisdiction. So those are situations where charges have been laid and the matter is proceeding through the system awaiting disposition. One of the impacts that the court system has, particularly in cases involving families, is that the accused person is often released on conditions, usually including conditions not to have contact with the victim. Well, in situations involving families, that's extremely difficult as far as trying to sort where that person um, is going to reside. And sometimes, um, you know, particularly if the accused person or the victim is the caregiver of the other, it can be extremely complex as far as how we keep individuals safe, but also recognizing that these are families who may potentially have never had issues that brought them to the criminal justice system for many years and now find themselves thrust into this situation where they've been ordered to have no contact. So the Victim Witness Program works very closely with the Crown Attorney's Office, and our role is to provide information to the client and support them through the system, but also act as a, a voice uh, of advocacy to the Crown Attorney so that victims and or their families or caregivers have an opportunity to provide their input as far as how they're feeling about what's happened, what they would like to see happen with the case and any other potential um, issues to bring to the prosecutor's attention. This becomes extremely important when it involves um, victims of elder abuse because an early assessment as far as the needs and ability of somebody to testify um, can assist us in advocating with the Crown Attorney around what the needs could be. So I also wanted to acknowledge the change that we've seen in the system and the laws um, over the last 20 years as far as supporting individuals who do have to come to court. So for example, I'm sure many of you are familiar with some of the testimonial aids that the criminal code now allows. So we can advocate with the Crown Attorney's Office to allow an elderly person or a vulnerable witness to be able to testify through closed circuit TV. Uh, we can advocate for a support person to assist the vulnerable witness in their evidence giving in the actual courtroom by sitting beside them. We have screens available, which aren't always very um, uh, required with elderly uh, witnesses, but when you think about children um, or young adults who are required to come and face their abuser in the courtroom, um, some people prefer to testify from behind a screen. Um, so they're not actually able to see the accused person as he or she is in the courtroom. So certainly there have been many advances in the law over the last 20 years as far as recognizing um, how we can address some of those challenges. One of the important things my office can do when a case is coming before the courts is to have a Crown Attorney assigned to it early on in the proceedings. Sometimes cases are before the courts for many, many months, sometimes years. Um, the earlier that we can have a Crown Attorney assigned to a file to be able to assess what the, what the case is and work towards resolving it um, as soon as possible, the better. It also gives us an opportunity to understand from the victim, him or herself, or um, the caregiver um, or family member, what the needs might be as far as uh, memory, um, the cognitive capabilities of the witness. Are there mobility issues? Do we need to look at accommodations as far as getting that person to court, even transportation? Um, and court can be a very, very long uh, system, a process that day. So how does the individual manage as far as having to sit for long periods of time? Do we need to advocate for regular breaks in court during that person's testimony? Perhaps we want to ask um, the courthouse to provide uh, an assisting hearing device. Those are the kinds of things that we would be looking at um, as far as requirements and needs for the clients early on.
So I also just wanted to touch on COVID because um, you may have heard in the news about some of the effects that uh, the pandemic has had on the system and ultimately what that means for, for accused people, but also for victims. So initially in my area, and this is the case for most of Ontario, um, courts for months were ultimately on hold. Since July, courtrooms uh, in the province have started to open up again with precautions and safety measures in place, of course. I wanted to highlight um, a couple of cases that we have been dealing with lately um, because it really highlights how the courts and the criminal justice system have tried to look at creative ways to support uh, vulnerable witnesses during COVID. So in fact, um, right now, <laughs> uh, I can tell you that we have an 84 year old uh, client, a victim of an assault from her um, adult daughter testifying by Zoom from her home. Um, very, very uh, new to us. Um, up until COVID, uh, most people were still required to attend the courthouse if they were subpoenaed as a witness. So we've actually seen some very positive impacts from COVID as far as the criminal justice system uh, modernizing to some extent and starting to recognize the need uh, to make justice more accessible to the people that are required to participate. So an elderly client, much like a child um, or somebody perhaps with developmental delays um, or serious health concerns who are already challenged with the idea of attending uh, a courthouse can now benefit from testifying remotely. So this has been a huge um, step in terms of progress as far as addressing those needs. Uh, I was involved with an elder abuse case last month. Uh, again, it was a um, husband and wife in their 80s who were also victims of assault um, from their adult daughter. And uh, again, due to health concerns, uh, neither of those individuals were comfortable coming into a public building due to COVID. The Crown Attorney advocated with the judge so that these two uh, were able to testify remotely. And my office was able to facilitate some support and technology um, so that both of those people actually gave their evidence uh, from their homes. Um, which was remarkable, which we haven't, we haven't seen. Um, so, so I see the courts, um, even during this pandemic, um, trying to find ways that we can address uh, the needs of vulnerable victims that need to come involved in the criminal justice system. So I know at the time, I wanna thank you for uh, inviting me once again, the theme of this year's um, national recognition of victims and survivors is resiliency. And um, certainly COVID uh, has been a year that has brought more challenges than we've seen before, as far as dealing with cases coming to the courts and, and trying to support individuals who are required to testify. So um, thank you. I hope, uh, I hope you have a, a good afternoon. And again, congratulations to all of your award recipients. Thank you so much, Nadine. A true pleasure to have you on. And uh, we definitely need to have you come back for a full webinar in January. <laughs> uh, you have a lot to share. And uh, I can speak personally that, you know, um, individuals I've worked with that have worked with VWAP have truly been um, impacted in a meaningful way and a beneficial way from uh, the, the court support to, um, you know, walking through the court process. It's just uh, wonderful work that you do. So we truly thank you. And um, I just do want to um, 
end off the webinar with a few of our upcoming webinars for everybody. Uh, so thank you again, Nadine, for your expertise. It's thank very you. valuable. Uh, so I do want to highlight that we um, are hosting an array of webinars again next week, uh, looking at uh, the 1st of December. So this Tuesday, believe it or not, is the first. And uh, we will be hosting protecting residents in long-term care and their right to being safe and secure. And that's uh, in collaboration with the Advocacy Center for the Elderly. And then moving on to the 2nd of uh, December is... Um, looking at the rights of older adults um, and, and moving that conversation forward. And I'm happy to be hosting on the 4th of December, uh, reframing how we uh, talk about elder abuse in um, social media. And that's with the National Center of Elder Abuse. Um, so we're excited about that. Uh, if you could just move the slides forward, Ryan. And then of course, please like and follow us on social media at EA Prevention Ontario. And then uh, Rayanne and myself, our contact information is made available here. And if you'd like to reach out to us, uh, please don't hesitate. And congratulations to all the recipients of um, the Victims of Crime Week Award, all um, very hardworking individuals. So congratulations on behalf of Elder Abuse Prevention Ontario and have a wonderful day. And and more importantly, a wonderful uh, weekend. Thank you. Have a again. great day. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, Thank for you. participating.